So we poured it on yarn and Morden Morden did it. Morden did it. Morden Morden did it. Morden did it. Hey guys, I'm Bella, the Make Rama Boss Lady behind Fiber and Fox, and this is episode 58 of my podcast. I'm still pregnant. <laughs> So we'll talk about that in a second, but um, I'm Bella. Like I said, I'm a crochet designer. I also knit, and this is where I talk about it with all of you. Uh, you can find everything that you need to know about me linked down below. And typically there are show notes that go over to my blog. With this episode, there might just be show notes in the down bar, but I will try to have links for you one way or another because I try to, try to be really good about that. But yeah, very, very pregnant. Um, by the time you're watching this, I may even have a baby. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm basically full term at this point. Um, definitely by the time you're seeing it and yeah, just kind of, kind of waiting it out at this point. <laughs> like anytime you want to come, bud, we ready. Um, so very, very excited. I have to say, I love, I love being pregnant and like the miracle and amazing like experience that it is and the blessing to carry life inside me and be able to feel like my baby move around and stuff. But those last couple weeks they were off. <laughs> so I am definitely at the, as soon as you're good and ready, you, you come on out and join us. Like you're invited to the party. You just, you just show up whenever you're, whenever you're good now. Um, stage <laughs> kind of just ready to hold my baby, not in my torso. So that's where I'm at. But yeah, um, this is, this, I would, I would really think this would be the last podcast episode. <laughs> don't think I can sneak another one in there. Lord, please let this be the last podcast episode. <laughs> but I'll keep you guys posted. I'm probably going to go dark on you for a little bit. But um, at some point when I feel like I've taken a su sufficient amount of maternity leave and figured out how to um, record with an infant, um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back. So thank you for your, your patience and graciousness and that and all of your prayers and all that. I really, really appreciate it. We're very very excited to be a family of four, but we're not going to, I mean, there, there's going to be a lot of baby makes in this episode, but I'm not going to focus on that the whole time, but I have a incredible amount of finished objects. Like I think I have something like nine finished objects <laughs> again, like those last couple weeks. Um, I think it's been three weeks since I podcasted regularly. I did have two vlogs the weeks prior to this. Yeah, I think it's been three weeks. I don't think it's been a whole month, but either way, I've been very busy making and a lot of them are small objects. So, I mean, it's not as, it's not like I made full, nine full size sweaters or anything, but, um, yeah, nine objects and some of them are socks. So it's pairs. Uh, and I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. <laughs> so I've been very busy. Um, yeah, I just, I need to keep myself and my hands and my mind moving. Um, I'm not someone Thankfully, there's, there's been no medical need for any bed rest or anything like that, but I'm not someone who can just, even under normal circumstances, sit and rest. Um, but leading up to a baby, I'm definitely like, do all the things. Nest, nest, nest. Um, so I've been, I've been making a lot. I think that's it as far as admin, so we're just going to jump into the finished objects. But this one's kind of a cheat of a finished object because it was finished last time, but I further finished it, I guess. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the pattern too much in depth or the yarn or anything, but this is the, ooh, it's really hard to show adult size garments with my current setup. Um, maybe I'll put in a picture, but this is the Cumulus Tee by Petite Knit. And I had the, I had the yellow bit, the sweater itself, the tee itself, I guess, finished last time. Um, and I'm very, very happy with it. It's been a little muggy and humid still to be wearing it, but I know that this is one that I'll be wearing. Um, it'll probably look really cute with my Fields cardigan, um, which is one of my crochet designs, layered in the fall. Um, and I'm very excited to have it in my wardrobe in the future. It's a lovely cotton, linen, all sorts of things blend. But the issue I was having is this bottom hem um, was rolling quite a bit. And part of it may have been my baby bump, but I, I don't... Like there's an I-core edge, so you have to ignore the this part. There's an I-cord edge. Um, and I don't know if I did it too loosely, too tightly. I think there was supposed to be some decreases and I did 
less or none of them because in the past my eye cords have pulled in and I didn't want it to like billow out at my waist. Um, so I think I did the eye cord. I honestly don't remember what I did, but I, <laughs> I did it larger than I think it needed to be. Um, and I think I also crocheted around, no, I crocheted around the neckline to make the eye cord not do weirdness. Come on. So there's an eye cord there and then I did single crochet into the eye cord because um, I wanted to tighten up the neckline a little bit and I just thought it made it lay nice and flat. But the sleeves are just plain eye cord and they weren't rolling or doing any weird bits. My camera seems to be having a hard time auto-focusing today, so I apologize if it's a little delayed. But the bottom hem, especially over my belly, but either way was very rolly. And I know that that's a look sometimes in sweaters um, where there's, it, it wasn't even like a, a garter edge or anything it was an eye cord so it should not have been rolling but it wanted to roll really badly and I blocked it and everything and it still just wanted to roll like not just once but like two or three times to the point where there was like this bulky like cinnamon roll thing going around my waist and I didn't appreciate it so I added some crochet because I didn't want to pull out that eye cord and do it again and I also had run out of the yellow yarn um so some random I honestly don't even know what the yarn, it may have been Fibra Natura, um, some sort of linen. Lena? Something that I made a Hohi Locatelli tank out of last year. Um, I did a crochet lace edging on it to weigh it down and make that eye core behave. And I think it turned out really fun. I was kind of worried that the gray was gonna be an odd contrast because uh, I just I had no more of this yellow yarn to be able to pull something off and I didn't have another color at least in the similar cotton or linen blend that would have worked so I just did you know some good old crochet I love that knitting and crochet both have their strengths um and I'll be, I'll be the first to admit that like I don't like crocheted socks um but if I'm gonna do an edging like this like crochet is for sure my go-to and I'm a, crochet is you know my first love and all of that um, so I was, I'm always thrilled when I can combine the two. I would love, no, don't say the spell. <laughs> I would love to design patterns that incorporate knitting and crocheting, but no, I'm sticking to the crocheting. But the, the edging that I did was roughly, um, based off of one in this book. It is, I think I wrote down the page number, um, page 267, the maids in the row, maids in a row edging. And I can't really, I can't really show you anything in the book without giving away the pattern. Um, but this is a great, great resource book if you're looking for some either stitches to use in designs or just to mess around with. It's got motifs and shapes and granny squares and the like, and then it's got a whole section of like edgings. Um, and yeah, there's 500 and I have my favorites marked there. But yeah, I was able to pull one out of there. I slightly, modified it because we know that I can't just what is happening here books please my torso doesn't rotate please go back in there I'm sorry you'll have to watch this okay good enough um slightly modified it because I can't just follow a pattern that would be asking too much so I think the only thing that I changed is I did the border and then I added this slightly pico edging um, extra row on the bottom here with the little dupes at the points. But yeah, it, it's a great fix and it, it lays nicely now. Drapes, lovely. Um, I don't remember honestly what hook size I did, but it doesn't really matter. Find one that fits well with your cage and go ahead and do that. I should probably put this in like a project page on Ravelry because I think I'm the only one who's done this to the edge. Um, but I don't really do project pages unless I'm testing for someone. So that's my cumulus tea. Very happy with it. Um, happy it's done and happy that it's, I was able to make it functional for me. Um, so I'm curious to see how the fit looks once I'm not pregnant because it's definitely slightly more oversized than I would have liked. I think if I make another one, because it's a very good staple piece, if I make another one, I will make it slightly smaller because it's a little, a little extra fabric, especially for the the weight of the yarn um it's fingering weight but like cotton and linen kind of can be heavy cotton in particular so i i might make another in a, a solid like gray or something and make it a little more form-fitting but i'm curious to see how this fits once the whole baby thing levels out which you know is a while so that is my sort of finished object because i refinished it i think i have them written down in the order that i did them but we'll stick with the sweaters 
So we have talked about this last time as well. This is the Friday Sweater Baby, also by Petite Knit. And this is another one I had fully intended to follow the pattern, but failed to. Um, this is supposed to be, if you look at the part here where the raglan stitches are, it is all supposed to be in broken rib. Um, and this is a pattern I believe that she has in other adult, or she has like a T version in adult. There's a whole bunch of sizes. This is the baby version. Um, but the whole thing is supposed to be this broken rib. I somehow messed that up in the first couple of rows and didn't feel like <laughs> redoing it. So instead I have this broken seed stitch like pattern that I just stuck with throughout. And I think it turned out lovely. I love the texture of it. The only part that got a little funky is um, where the broken rib part ended, where I was doing the raglan increases, it kind of didn't flow, flow super well into the body. And I talked about last time that I considered doing some like accent broken rib panels on the side, but I thought that was a little much, um, for a baby sweater. So all in all, I, I think it turned out great. I'm not sure if and when this will fit my son seasonally appropriately. Um, cause it is a little larger than I was hoping for, but we'll see. I think this is actually the back. It's, yeah, that's the front. Sorry, I was showing you the part with the seam, but yeah, that's the front. They're pretty much the same. There's no short rows in it. Um, and my neckline might be a little tight because I failed to do a stretchy cast on. I just did like a loose cast on. So hopefully getting it over his head will be feasible. We'll see. Um, I'm trying to think about what I talked about last time. I know we talked about the Italian bind off which is this kind of sort of stretchy sewn bind off, I guess similar to maybe a tubular bind off, but I think I like the look of tubular better, but I've never been able to, able to execute it correctly. This is basically, and I don't know how tubular works, but this is basically you kitchener the thing to itself to bind it off. Um, so you kitchenered like the knit stitches to the purl stitches. I didn't love that. So I just did a regular kind of stretchy bind off on the, um, on the wrists. And I made the sleeves extra long because I think it's much easier to just, you know, cuff a baby sweater. This is my, my hack with my toddler as well as I'd rather make the sweater in a, a size because I feel like they grow lengthwise faster than they grow widthwise. So even if the sweater um, gets slightly shorter on them and maybe it works better with girls because cropped stuff works a little easier than with boys. But um, I feel like having a rolled up sleeve for one season and then being able to unroll it and use it the next season because um, they got taller is a good option. But that, 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 may, that may not work with babies because babies grow a lot faster than toddlers. So I don't know, I'm hoping he gets quite a bit of wear out of it. Um, but yes, I always on any child size thing do the sleeves an inch or so um, or even more longer than what's recommended in pattern. So yeah, I follow this pattern sort of and I, I think the stitch texture is commendable. Um, and I don't know if broken seed stitch is actually the term of what this would be, but usually seed stitch is knitting on pearls and purling on knits, alternating your rows. And this was like a knit one, purl one, and then a knit a row, and then a purl one, knit one kind of thing that I was doing. Um, but yes, other than that, recommend the pattern. And I think it turned out super cute. So hopefully it fits him in some sort of spring-ish season and he gets some wear out of it. The yarns that I used are buried somewhere in this pile. The undyed, I know it's like the tag, but I don't know. The undyed um, yarn was some that I had gotten for dyeing on, but uh, it's a 50% recycled wool, 50% tensile base. From Nomad Yarns um, and it's actually very soft for not being super wash or anything it's very I'm not sure what tensile is is that plant-based I'm not sure comment below what is tensile um, and then the red stripe was a scrap of you can't see it from here because it's up on the top but fiber for the people in the colorway chili on one of her non superwash bases as well so very happy with that. I 
blocked it ever so slightly um, but not a lot so I think there will be some room for blocking it larger too as he grows if I wanted to and hopefully um, it withstands puking and whatnot because <laughs> it's, it's a very risky color for a baby um, during the process of making it you can scarcely see it I mostly got it out my daughter I was working on it in the morning and I had a cup of dandelion tea, um, which is or dandelion and chicory, which is pretty dark stuff, like a coffee substitute. Um, and my daughter came down and took a sip and then spilled it everywhere. So it got all over the sweater and thankfully I was able to get that out. So that gives me some hope for the washability of the baby sweater. Um, but that was as far as I got as blocking. So I made that. And then I figured thinking about messy babies, I should make some bibs which are kind of glorified baby shawls. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know how many like tiny hats he needs. And I, I'm gonna make some socks, but again, like, I don't know, I want cute accessories. And boy accessories are harder to come by in levels of cuteness than girl accessories. And I wasn't able to find any bib patterns that I liked, um, either knit or crochet, honestly. Um, I feel like there's got to be some cute ones out there. I made some crocheted ones for my daughter that were pretty cute, um, but I thought they were a little too girly. So I was looking for like a very neutral, very plain um, bib-ish pattern, but I like like the triangular bandana bib look, even in like the cloth ones that I buy. I really like the triangular, looks like a bandana. Um, so I decided to hack my Title Fades shawl pattern, uh, which is one of my designs, obviously. Uh, which is a full-size adult shawl, triangle shawl, hack that pattern and turn it into a triangle bib. So what I did, sort of, kind of, this is not a pattern, I am not writing this up, I don't do baby patterns, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you want to experiment, um, I just had, a, I've made, I think, four of them? I thought there was a fifth one. Maybe there's only four. But I made a whole stack of just scrap yarn bibs in various fibers and weights and contents and all of that. So I took the pattern using the stitch pattern and the increases. Um, didn't do any of the color changes, didn't do any, um, this isn't even the right weight yarn. And I used different yarns and hooks for all of them. So that doesn't so much matter, but my actual pattern comes in DK weight and a uh, worsted Aran version as well. Um, so I did the, the shaping and the stitch which is, it's, it's a beautiful stitch. And this one, I have to say, um, tends to be my pattern that people who knit are most surprised is crochet, um, which I try to do with a lot of my patterns because I love that weight that's crocheted thing. Um, but I have it as a sample. Um, some dyers have it as a sample and it's, a, it's been a sample in a local yarn store as well. And there's been a lot of people who came in and wanted the pattern and bought yarn for it and then realized, wait a second, I don't know how to crochet. <laughs> it's a crochet pattern. And that brings me a lot of joy. Um, converting the knitters. Make knitters jealous. But yes, if you are a crocheter and you're looking for a great knit-like shawl, um, especially if you're looking to kind of get into indie dyed yarns and the like, but you can make it in anything, um, highly recommend Tidal Fates shawl, DK, or the regular weight. But yes, so what I did is basically did the shawl pattern to whatever size I felt was appropriate. I did some extra increases um, at a certain point that I felt was appropriate to make it kind of curve up and some of them I did decreases along the top edge when I was done um, I did the, the crab stitch border that's included in the pattern which is a really fun texture and then I not in the pattern but I kind of want to incorporate it into a shawl pattern because it's kind of glorious is some what is this called surface crochet it's not showing up great in this color let me show you another one I crocheted on top of the crochet. I think it's called surface crochet um, in some accent color yarns. So I made, oh, and I added some buttonholes because there's not buttonholes in the shawl. The shawl's a triangle with tassels. Um, so I added a couple, couple buttonholes, a couple cute, random, again, just scrappy buttons that I had. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really cute, sweet, it looks really cute with a sweater. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of elfy. <laughs> Kind of like a little, little extra Christmassy here, but um, yeah, this I think was some Barocco Comfort DK maybe. 
Um, this is a fiber for the people scrap on the edge. This is, I think, just some Lily's sugar and cream, whatever that basic cotton is, um, with some Patton's Croy on the edge, sock yarn, button in the back. That button's a little huge um, with this one. I think it's just cotton. And then I made this one out of, this one's a chunky worsted weight kind of version, out of a discontinued yarn that I used for the Fan Deco vest. I think it's called Fair Isle Harbor or Port, one of the two. Um, but this is a cotton bamboo viscose, I think, blend. And I don't know what I use for the edging. Oh, I think it was some of the um, Hobby Lobby, whatever the bamboo one is that I use for the baby blanket. On the edge, I really like this yellow. <laughs> Obviously, this is my favorite one. Uh, another random button. And then this one, I have no idea what this yarn was. It feels like a cotton, but it's got like some amount of stretchiness to it. And then I edged it out in some lean and lotus something maybe here. Um, so they're all, none of them are exactly the same size. I don't know what size they even are. But yeah, I think they'll be both functional for drooling and whatnot, but also just really cute. <laughs> Cause I'm all about that and yeah he won't need these right away but when we do start putting like burp cloth spit cloth bib cloth type things these aren't gonna be like I'm going to feed you raspberries in the high chair kind of bibs but more like a we're going to church and you need an accessory <laughs> kind of kind of bibs I guess uh, so I think those came out really cute and I guess you could really hack any start with like a start what is this I guess in knitting it's usually like a garter tab but start here and increase into a triangle shawl you could pr probably hack any pattern you wanted into a baby bib so that was just a fun little endeavor and they took me an hour or two each and I used up a ton of scraps I have which one are you scrap yarns I'm trying to use up a lot of the randomness that I have I got rid of pretty much all of the acrylic in my stash other than the yarns that I really loved. Um, but I have a lot of cotton and scrap randomness that I'm trying to use up. And this was a great way to finish off quite a few random skeins of stuff either from other projects or what, wherever it came from. So very pleased with those. And then let's see, let's go down the list here. I have three pairs of finished socks. Uh, two of them were half finished last time I think or more or less some some amount of finish there was one or more socks done last time but now I have finished them in entirety so these are the sprocket socks these are by Pippin Pin and I mostly correctly executed the pattern there's a couple couple things I did wonky but it's a really beautiful slip stitch color work pattern um, and it's written for five mini skeins, um, but she also has in the pattern how you can customize it to however many colors or scraps that you want to use. Um, and I think in the past she's done like a scrappy swap thing. Um, I don't know if she still facilitates that, but I think this was a pattern that she designed for that where she was facilitating the swap and then had some patterns to go along with it. Um, so these were my summer vacation knit and I finished them up. They are, I love the colors. These were all Lane and Lotus minis. I am not sure what the colorways are on them. And Jen is currently on a break from dying. Um, and I'm hoping she comes back because she's, she's local to me and she's one of my favorite dyers. And like, I mean, look at these colors. So perfect. Um, but yeah, I have a bunch of random minis from her and it was really fun to pair them up together and create a sock really reminiscent of our summer, um, camping trip because it just was very I don't know like we were camping at like a pine forest campground so like the pine trees and like the the rocks and the gravel and the branches and then like our RV like it was just yeah just a lot of colors from our trip so these are a nice memory sock this is the first time that I did a shadow wrap heel which was not what was recommended in the pattern I'm sorry I'm <laughs> I ate a peach before this and now I have like hiccups. 
and I forgot to bring my water in here but I'm sure I will get it for a bathroom break at some point and I'll get it then but um shadow wrap heel was not in the pattern I think there was a German short row heel um or a wrap and turn heel some other short row heel usually I I'm strictly a heel flap and gusset person but I thought that would kind of break up the color work strangely so I did want to do some sort of a short row heel and I had heard that the shadow wrap had a little more room in it for people with a higher arch um, which I am definitely one and yeah I followed a tutorial by why can I not think of her name earth tones girl um, I'll try to remember to link that, but she has a full video tutorial in her um, No Fear Sock Knitting class, which is all on YouTube. It's a great resource if you want to learn how to knit socks. Um, but yeah, she has a shadow wrap heel tutorial, and I, I, it did pretty well. I had to sew up, I don't know if you could tell, but like the joins in the corners, I had to sew them up a little bit because they were a little gappy, but overall it worked out pretty well, but I don't think I'll be doing it again because it is still too tight over my arch and part of it may be the the slip stitch color work but it definitely definitely pulls right here but other than that very happy with these um yeah sprocket socks so those are finished and then we have finished the juniper grove socks which are by the blue mouse knits and i think i had one and part of one of these done last time these are incredibly wooly and a kind of ridiculous summer sock knit, but you know, I gotta have a sock project. Uh, this is a very simple textured rib pattern and they fit great. Really nice and stretchy, really nice and cozy. I don't entirely remember if I modified anything on these. Um, I did do an eye of partridge heel, which is a heel flap and gusset, but I usually just do like a regular slip stitch heel. Um, but I think this is what was recommended in the pattern and it kind of, it blends nicely. What I used for yarn were these two cones of mill ends from Green Mountain Spinnery. I feel like I've explained them like 47 times and you're probably sick of hearing about them, but um, I have a mill tour. If you want to look at the mill tour of Green Mountain Spinnery and these are like random odds and ends that they clear off of the, the spools, the machines. I don't, I don't really know the terminology, but um, yeah, and then they sell these for super cheap. So like giant cones for like, I think it's 80 cents an ounce or something. So it's a great deal, but they are usually a single ply. You can't even see that because it's so tiny. A single ply, very thin, very breaky, um, but held together, strengthens it a little bit. And then I also, I don't know if you can tell, held, let's see if we can see it, barely. You can see it popping through a little bit like there. I held a polyester like just sewing thread. Um, I think it was polyester, not nylon, but a sewing thread in the heel flap, heel turn, and toes, um, just to kind of more reinforce the durability, I guess, of the the yarn. Because it's not a sock yarn; they are 100% wool of some kind, unmarked. I'm not sure what they are, um, but they are wooly wool, and they smell super lanoliny even after um, being washed with wool wash and everything. Super rustic, um, but perfectly fine for me for socks. I don't do well with rustic anywhere else, but my feet are sweaty enough that I can handle it for socks. Um, my camera is threatening to overheat because it's hot out, so we're gonna take a break and I'll be back with more socks in just a moment. I'm back and I feel like I may have knocked my camera angle slightly when I got up, so I apologize if things change, but I have another pair of socks. I did not expect to have the I did these in a week um, for no particular reason and I did not expect to have another finished pair but here we are um, so these oh they so pretty look at how pretty those are these are sort of kind of <laughs> again why would I follow the pattern exactly sort of kind of the hearth and home socks by Larkspur Knits, I believe. Um, and I think these were initially a free pattern. I don't know if they're still a free pattern, um, but I will link it for you either way. Um, but I, I more or less did what, I, what the pattern called for um, in that, yeah, I did, I did the cuff to pattern. And the body of the sock is 
basically the pattern except on the rows that involved ribbing. Um, and I don't want to give away too much because I'm not sure if it is a free pattern, but the rows that involved ribbing, um, I did knit through the back loop on the knit stitches, or so twisted stitches on the knits instead of just regular knitting and purling. Um, so it kind of popped out those stitches just a little bit more. And I think they are just glorious. I love them <laughs> so much. Um, and they went surprisingly fast for like a non-self-striping yarn. Um, I was just really excited about the yarn or just, again, just that preparation, like anxious feeling of needing to do something with my hands, but really, really enjoyed these. And I think I would make another pair. Um, maybe, maybe I'll make another one without the twisted stitches and just have them both. Um, but yeah, really, really like this pattern. And especially if it is free, I would suggest you go and grab it. But, um, there was, did I change this? Yes. So the heel flap um, in the pattern is a continuation of the stitch pattern throughout. Um, so it, it carries on to the heel flap. But I was concerned about the, that's just the one that I messed up, so I don't know why I'm showing you that one, but um, the density. I usually like a slip stitch heel or an eye of partridge heel because it's very thick. It creates a very dense heel fabric because you're slipping the stitches. It makes almost a double, really squishy fabric that really reinforces the heel very well. Um, so I was concerned if I just con continued in this like rib situation, um, that it would just be very thin and I'd get holes in it. Um, and it is a super wash, so it's not the most, most durable of things. So I did another eye of partridge heel because I had just finished the Juniper Grove ones and was kind of in the mood for that. And I think it paired really well with this yarn um, and the stitch pattern as well. There's definitely this one I've like messed up. I don't know if you can tell because it, Hides pretty well, yeah, you can see. It hides pretty well in the variegated, but I messed up the stitch pattern. I have partridge is one that it's, it's a four row repeat, and if I'm not carefully counting, <laughs> I go back into the regular slip stitch heel, but it's a sock, it's fine. But the yarn um, is glorious, and I got it recently on the i91 Shop Hop. Um, and by Shop Hop, I mean, there are nine stores that you can go to along i91, and I went to one of them. <laughs> Um, uh, my friend Emily of A Rambling Yarn was visiting. Um, we are, it's always just so fun to me, funny to me because she is like my long time. We met in first grade, I think first grade, um, like just long time closest friend. Um, and we both ended up being really into fiber arts, um, in adulthood through various means and whatever, um. So she was up visiting and we were able to go to U and U, which is in Windsor, Connecticut. Um, and she was doing some stuff for the shop hop and had some pop-up dyers there and whatnot. Um, but actually neither one of these, these yarns, I do have some more I'll show you in a minute that I got from another dyer, but these were just from inside of her shop. The contrast color is a mini skein, which I really, I really like this. She doesn't, she's not um, someone that is considered a dyer. She just does some random skeins for the shop here and there, but um, Rachel of You and You dyed this one. I don't think it has a color name. I think it's just a random mini, but it, it's delightful. I really, really like, look at that. I really, really like that color. Um, so good job, Rachel. And then the main color is by Beach Bum Yarn Co., um, which is dyed in Massachusetts, which is, you know, fairly local to me. And it's actually my first time working with her yarn. And I think this, I think this may have been like a holiday colorway. Um, I'm always confused if Old Lang Syne is actually a Christmas song or if it's a New Year song. Um, Cause it kind of has verses that apply to both. Um, but yeah, Old Lang Syne is the, the colorway, I believe on the Santa Cruz sock base, 7525. And it is just, just lovely and meets all of my grello green, swamp green, gray wants, needs, and desires. So I have a bit of that left, so I can probably make another pair um, with something. And I really, really, really like this color quite a lot. I don't know if it would be, no, I'd probably wear a sweater in this. If I'd wear it as a garment. It's kind of, kind of a lot, but the speckles would disperse out more in a garment. So I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I'd wear that stocking at. I'd, I'd wear that. 
So I really like that color and I really like it paired with the mini. So I got those at the Shop Hop when I went with M. And yeah, I knit those up in, yeah, I cast them on last Sunday and finished them this Sunday. So in a week and they were quick and lovely and really, really enjoyed that pattern. So we'll probably be coming back to that again and making some more Hearth and Home socks. I think, I think that's it on the finished objects. I have one sort of kind of a whip. It's pretty, pretty uneventful, but we'll show you. It's another baby thing. It's baby socks, which are ridiculous and tiny. But I figured I'd make some cozy woolly socks, which, you know, socks never stay on babies. So it's kind of, kind of a joke, but um, I'm going to make some anyway. <laughs> These I cast, okay, hang on, let me just show you. So this is the top of the sock. It's tiny. I just started the, the heel flap. Um, but this is another free pattern that I just found today. I did this all this afternoon. It goes very fast because, you know, tiny baby socks. Found this pattern today. It is the stretchy baby sock pattern, I think, on Ravelry. It is by Pink Zombie, who I'm not familiar with at all, but she makes a stretchy baby sock pattern. And it has a variation that has this broken, or not broken seed stitch, broken rib. Um, broken seed stitch is the thing I made up for that sweater. Broken rib, actual broken rib stitch, and then also a two by two ribbing version, some other ribbing version, um, in a couple different baby sizes from newborn up to other baby sizes, I guess. And this is another Green Mountain Spinnery Cone. This one's actually a two ply, so I'm not holding it double. And I figured he can't walk or anything anyway, so he's not going to be, you know, wearing through the heels of his heels of his shoes or his socks, but this is super wooly and it seems like it's going to bloom very nicely and have a bit of a halo to it. I don't know if you can see, but it's got quite a bit of fuzz to it. Definitely wooly and rustic, but some nice floof. Um, so hopefully these will be cute. I made, the, I'm making the third size, I think, which is three to six months, because I was thinking if he's born in, you know, like September, um, the kind of the first couple months, you literally just wear like those little onesie pajama things. Um, but may maybe come actual winter, he'll be wearing actual socks. And I figured I could put these over other socks or over like footy things as well as it's cold. Um, cause I do very much intend to still be with my, I have a toddler daughter. So we're going to be outside in the snow sledding and taking walks and still going outside year round. So these will be good for bundling up. Um, but it seems, I think this is a free pattern as well. So this is a 40 stitch cast on. And this yarn definitely might be more closer to a, more close, <laughs> closer to a sport weight than a fingering weight. I did not do a gauge swatch. This is a baby suck. But it's supposed to come out to a three to six month size. And um, this would definitely, I don't know if it would fit over her foot, but this would definitely fit the ankle of my three-year-old. So I feel like this is probably more of a one-year-old size, maybe. Um, so maybe he'll be wearing these ones next fall and I'll make another pair. We'll see how big the foot turns out. Um, but they seem, they seem a little large, but they're definitely cozy and wooly. Um, so I'm excited about that. And I have no shortage of Green Mountain Spinnery skein, so I can definitely make some more, and it's too too wooly for me to make garments for myself or my kids out of. Um, so socks it is. So I will keep you posted on the, I guess, the arrival of the baby and the finishing of the wooly baby socks. But that is my my only whip currently. I am kind of at the point now where I don't want to cast anything too complicated on because I know I'm going to be having a baby at any given moment. Um, I do want to make a ranunculus for myself at some point as like a fourth trimester knit situation. Um, but I don't have a ton of plans. I might cast on a hat for him. Um, and I might cast on some socks for my daughter. She's requested a colorwork yoke cat sweater, probably for her birthday, which is later in the fall. Um, she has a colorwork owl one that I did for her second birthday and she loves that thing. And I think the sleeves are going to be a little short this year, but she might be able to like cuff it and wear it as a three quarter length because it's going to be wide enough still. Um, cause again, they get longer before they get wider. 
or I might rip out the cuffs and make them longer or something. But she really, she loves owls still, like has since like one and a half. She's going on four. Girl loves owls. Um, so she loves that sweater so much. Um, but she did mention that she would like a cat one now. She would like a cat sweater. We have two black cats and she would like a black cat yoke sweater with not head cats, but whole cats. Because <laughs> we were going through Ravelry and there was like faces of cats or I was looking at ones that were foxes that maybe I could convert into cats because there's actually not a lot of cat kids color work sweaters. I felt like that would be kind of common, but I guess it wasn't. Um, or there's like scary like archy back cats. I don't want those. We want cute cats. Um, so if you have any suggestions, I have a couple of my Ravelry favorites that I'm thinking about, but at some point in maybe October, I will be working on a cat sweater as well. But that's all I have for whips right now. A couple acquisitions I can share with you though. Feel like I'm getting a little glisteny. It's getting sweaty in here. Um, but on the acquisition front, I actually have acquired technically a bit of yarn. Um, I have one more from the Shop Hop. So the other skein I got on the I91 Shop Hop at U and U. Um, she was having a pop up with local dyer Silver Key stitches, um, and I have worked with her yarn specifically this color <laughs> several times. Um, but I've also designed the. Serenity and Shiloh shawl uses one of her yarns as well. Um, but yes, yeah, Silver Key Stitches. And this is actually a lace weight. Um, I've used this purple and I think DK and fingering weight in various projects. And it's just like my favorite purple black. The color is Bordeaux. Um, and died in South Windsor, Connecticut, Bordeaux. And this is on her lace weight base, um, and it has a ton of yardage, 931 yards. Is that focusing? Maybe. But it's just the most perfect purple black, and I love purple black. <laughs> um, dark plum with just, you know, black in there, and it's beautiful. And I thought it would pair great with my other <laughs> purple black in stash. I have this mohair that um, I was pondering doing various things with. Probably a ranunculus. I was originally gonna just hold the mohair single um, and make just a super airy um, top because I was concerned about holding it double with something because I think in the pattern it calls for fingering weight held with lace weight, which puts you around a DK. Um, but then I found this lace weight skein, which would put me, I think, around a sport. Um, DK tends to just be kind of too heavy for me. I like a lighter weight sweater. I am not a chunky yarn person at all, and DK isn't even chunky, but... Um, yeah, I, I just like a really lightweight garment. So I think I may do a ranunculus with these two. How happy would those be together in all of their purple black glory? This one is a little more of a red. This is probably my ideal purple black, this one. But this is great too. This has more of a blue undertone. This one has more of a red undertone, but I think they'll pair really well together. Um, I am hesitant to swatch them because I don't want to waste. I only have one skein, like a skein and a half of this one. Um, and I, would like to do the ranunculus cropped and short sleeved, I think. Um, or maybe like three quarter length, depending on how the yarn is treating me now that I have this other skein. But that's one of those patterns that people have made it in every yarn size and every yarn weight and every body size. But I think it's a one size fits all pattern and it's originally fingering weight and lace weight. I don't know, I haven't actually purchased the pattern yet so I can't speak to how it's written. Um, but I know people make it and remake it and remake it in so many various, it's got a bazillion projects on Ravelry. So, ranunculus probably. So there's that. And then all the other yarn that I've acquired is some of the undyed stuff that I have since dyed. So if you didn't catch it in the last two weeks, there have been vlogs on solar dyeing. I am not gonna show you this entire basket, but I will show you the highlight reel here. These ones are my favorite. This is some yellow that I dyed with marigolds. I labeled them all so I could keep track of them. Um, and the reason they're in this basket as well, I usually keep everything obviously stored up there, but um, naturally dyed yarns are very sensitive to light um, and fading. So I wanted to keep them from fading. So they're going to live in the closet in the basket. These ones are dyed with pokeberry. Ooh, that's some good purple too. And then there's just various shades of pink things. Um, and I got a lot of beiges and stuff too that I ended up putting back in and I'm gonna die over because those weren't super exciting. Um, but yeah, really, really fun endeavor. Really enjoyed taking you along. I don't usually vlog 
projects. Um, I've vlogged like yarn stores and events and stuff before, but vlogging like start to finish a project. Um, I mean, it wasn't a knitting or crocheting project. It was a dyeing project, but not, vlogging the project itself was very fun. Um, so if you didn't catch those, there's a solar dyeing part one and part two. And I walk you through what it is that I used, how to get set up, how you can get set up, some inspiration. And then the second vlog is the reveal and what I learned and all that stuff. So those I thought were really fun and I would love to have your feedback on those, um, especially uh, going into a new season of content I'm going to be posting and whatnot and when and how. Um, I'd be really curious to know if you guys like that kind of vlog style. I'm not one to share like personal life vlogs. That's not me at all, but anything I can relate to yarn, um, I would be happy to share with you guys. So solar dyeing, it was a fun adventure. I'm not going to start a dyeing business. I'm not selling those. They're going to be just for me. Um, I got to figure out what to do with all that pink yarn, but very, very fun project. And then I also, since then, dyed two more skeins. These were actually two skeins that I over dyed. Um, and I thought they were going to come out differently, but they kind of came out pretty, pretty much the same. One of them has a slightly pinkier hue to them. Um, I think this one was one that was Japanese maple. Maybe it was a very pale pink. And then this one, um, was another, I did a stovetop experiment with <sighs> Queen Anne's Lace. I cannot remember the formal name of that plant right now. Um, but it came out super pale yellow and I wasn't, wasn't thrilled with it. Would have really washed me out. So I over dyed these with some coffee that my husband left in the coffee pot for too long. <laughs> so I stuck them in a jar again, stuck them outside, solar dye. This I only did for two, three days instead of like a week, which were the other ones. Um, yeah, but coffee dyed. So I have too many skeins and I have another yarn that we didn't dye with plants. It's not a naturally dyed yarn, but Another yarn, ooh, that shows up fun on camera. Another yarn that my daughter and I dyed together. Um, we had been over, <laughs> a lot of over dyeing going on in our life. Um, we had some onesies that were either hers, had some stains on them. We've been having some issues with our washing machine. It's making our laundry dirtier instead of cleaner. So that's getting looked at tomorrow. That's an interesting scenario. Um, <laughs> but we had some staining issues. Um, so I was trying to rescue some onesies with tie dye which when in doubt, like we constantly have a pile of her clothes, and even mine. <laughs> we have a pile of clothes that have like a weird something or another stain and we're like, eh, this is still usable. That stain's kind of weird, but tie dye will fix it. So we just tie dye over it and then you don't notice the stain anymore. But um, we were dyeing with some, I think it was, what's the tie dye brand? I don't remember. Tulip maybe? Maybe some tulip dye. I don't know. It was a tie dye kit. And we had a little bit left over um, and I hate dumping dye down a drain. So we poured it on yarn and Morden, Morden did it, Morden did it, Morden, Morden did it. That's hard to say. Morden did it um, with citric acid. I'm sorry, you just had to suffer through that with me. And yeah, we had a, an orange, a, a brownie green and a yellow and we just dumped it on the skein simmered it on the stove for a bit and I think it came out super fun. So I'm going to probably do socks pairing these and these because that look how autumnal that is. Like it's like I know what I'm doing here guys. I don't. One is thanks to my husband who left coffee for too long and one is thanks to my three-year-old. They're just brilliant up in here. Look at us go. Um, but yeah some really lovely autumnal colors that will make Probably I might make more of those hearth and home socks, honestly. I don't know. Does that pair with this one? Mm, that's a little wild. That's a little craziness. But yeah, something fun. Um, and yeah, we just, we always really enjoy using a leftover dye and have had some fun experiments with this. This would also make a really pretty shawl, but I don't need any more one skein shawls right now. So it's probably going to be socks. The, the tie dye or when we've used food dye, it's not the most color fast, like it, it does fade a bit. So this will probably chill out a little bit in, oh, that's so good though. Probably chill out a little bit in vibrancy. Um, but if I use it for socks, again, no worries. So that is, I think everything. I'm not even sure how long this video is because we've done several cuts, but that's it. I think <laughs> until, until we meet again, I guess. <sighs> Thank you guys. 
for being here. I know I say that every time, but I'm just blown away that anybody wants to sit and listen to me and the weird stuff I do with yarn. Um, let's listen to me talk about it. I really appreciate you guys and this community and the comments and the likes and the subscribes and all that. Like, it really does make a huge difference. And going forward, there's probably going to be, I don't know, maybe a shift in the, for a little bit at least, because it's going to be hard to be doing designs. I feel like I'll be able to get out more videos, maybe, hopefully, I don't know, um, videos than I will actual pattern designs um, in 2023. But we'll see. Um, but I really appreciate you guys coming along for all of it and your support and just, yeah, as we go into this, this new season, I, I covet your prayers and I look forward to chatting with you guys again soon. Do not know when it's going to be. I don't think I'm going to go through the end of the year without popping up again, but maybe we'll see how it goes. Um, obviously I'm going to prioritize my family and that transition and just really enjoying time together and fun fall things and coziness and baby snugs. So that's where I'll be. I am sure that I will be making um, something. I, I don't know. I have some designs in mind. I don't know if I'm going to get to them, um, but some designs and probably some selfish makes, some more baby makes, my daughter's birthdays in the fall. So I'm sure there'll be content. I don't know how much of it I'm going to be sharing. Um, if you do want to follow over on Instagram, fiber.and.fox, I still post there, though it's so frustrating with the whole shift in content prioritization and the algorithm and all of that. Um, but I would love to have you follow along there. Um, and also if you want to not lose track of me, make sure, make sure that you are liked, subscribed. Um, I guess liking doesn't matter, but subscribed um, and notifications turned on for my channel. And the really the very best way to make sure you don't lose me is my newsletter. So those are all linked down below if you want any of that and you hope to see my face again. That's where you can find me. Uh, I think, I think that's it. I don't really know how to close off a podcast, not knowing when I'm going to do another one, but that's it, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for being here. If I pop up again before I have this baby, like y'all need to pray harder because we need to have this baby. But yes, I will be making, I will be doing stuff. I will be creating because that's what I was created to do. Um, and I can't wait to share it with you again sometime soon. So Talk to y'all in a little bit. Bye.